I really believe, and based on my experience teaching in the classroom, which I still do, I teach uh, medical students, graduate students, and undergraduates at Stanford. Uh, the belief that I hold very, uh, very close is that if you give people a little bit of an understanding of the underlying mechanisms, it creates a, a system around any tool that makes it easier to do that practice and uh, makes it more impactful as well. So what I mean is, you know, I could do a whole episode just listing off tools and protocols for everything from fat loss to focus and attention, mental health, depression, trauma, grief, et cetera, based on the data. But if I start each episode, which I do with a little bit of a, of a description of the mechanism, for instance, how cold impacts metabolism, how, for instance, a particular childhood attachment pattern to a parent translates to an adult romantic attachment pattern. Then when I go into some of the description about the tools, my hope is that people will have those mechanisms in mind or even just subconsciously they're embedded. And then not only are they going to be more willing to lean into those tools, but those tools will be more impactful. And the last thing I'll say about this is I have a colleague at Stanford. I should introduce you guys because she'd make a phenomenal podcast. Guess her name is Ali Crum, Aliyah Crum. She is a tenured professor at Stanford. She's a trained clinical psychologist. She was a division one gymnast and she's a martial artist and she works on beliefs and belief systems. And she has incredible data showing that the result of anything you do or what you eat is both the consequence of that thing. So like she's done experiments, for instance, where they give people milkshakes and they tell them, okay, this is a low calorie milkshake. Or they tell people this is a high calorie nutrient dense. And it's milkshake. a regular milkshake. It's a, it's a milkshake. People drink that and they measure subjective reports of how fulfilling that and how, how much satiety, how much satisfaction it provides and for how long. And they measure hormones, insulin, ghrelin, all the hormones that are the consequence of eating. And what you find is that if you think what they find is that if people are told this is a high calorie nutrient dense shake, it provides much more satisfaction for much longer than if they're told that it's a low calorie nutrient sparse shake. Mm. And the hormones that one secretes in response to that milkshake differ in the two groups, even though the milkshakes are absolutely identical. Because it's all about your beliefs. It's in part about your beliefs. Because of course, if you know, uh, you can't tell yourself that the entire chocolate cake is, you know, uh, just a, a bowl of broccoli and it's gonna have the same effects as a bowl of broccoli. So anything you do, whether or not it's exercise, cold bath, what you consume is the consequence of that thing. There's some undeniable, non-negotiable realities about your biology. And then there's the belief system. And the other example I'll give is, they've done these beautiful studies where they tell one group, listen, stress is a part of life and it gives you dementia. It makes your thinking suffer. It can kill neurons. It can do all this terrible stuff. They tell another group, all that's true, by the way, in certain contexts. They tell another group, stress is a part of life, but it can sharpen your thinking. It can bring out your best. It can stimulate your immune system as long as it doesn't last too long. And what they find is that the biological effects of stress on those two groups match what those people are taught about stress. Wow. And so you can't get around the realities of stress or, ca or calories or things of that sort. There's the laws of physics but, and the laws of biology, but belief systems have a powerful role in how the tools and practices that we engage in shape us. And so that's the, the logical backbone for teaching people a bit about the mechanism. Because if, if I say, hey, do an ice bath, you know, it increases your metabolism, increases your resilience and can reduce pain and inflammation, help you sleep better at night, great. But lots of people are saying that. But if I say, listen, there's this pathway where when you get into cold water and it, it's really uncomfortable and you really wanna get out, but you stay in for an extra minute, you stimulate this certain uh, adrenaline related pathway in your brain and body, now, when you do it and you hit that wall, you're like, I really want to get out of here. You think, no, I want to stimulate that pathway. And then your belief and understanding about that pathway really does shape the fact that it works. Hmm. Uh, and so teaching mechanism is in part for me about educating and turning people on to the beauty of biology. But I realize, look, not everyone wants to be a biologist or a researcher, but I think everybody wants better mental health, physical health and performance. And so mechanism has a real impact.